All right, well, it is make it or break it for the bus here. We are gonna be taking this thing on a 16 hour trip up to Bowling Green, Kentucky for LS Fest. This is gonna be our first real true trip in the bus. We've done a local event with it, which was a short drive and a short event. This is a long event. We're gonna be staying in the bus all weekend. We're gonna be loaded to the brim and we're gonna be making a long out of state drive through all the types of terrain. So because of that, we wanna make sure this thing is as ready as it can be. And we have a long list of things we wanna to do to this thing to get it ready for our first out of state trip. But unfortunately we have a very limited amount of time to do those things. We have about two full days to get everything ready, do all the stuff we wanna to do to the bus and get the car loaded in it and, and so on and so forth. So now that being said, as it is, the bus works. We drove it back from Maryland, we did our local trip, but we wanna give ourselves the best confidence and the best chance to have a successful trip without breaking down. So that being said, if we wanna get all this done, I gotta quit jibber jabber and we gotta get into it. But before we get started, uh, the reason why we are so limited on time is because we had an event this past weekend. I went up to Bristol, Tennessee for the Bristol 1000, which is Cletus's Crown Vic race, 30 Crown Vics, crazy bank track, tons of YouTubers, professional racers from all different categories. It's an, it was an amazing time. I had a blast. So here's a quick recap of that before we get into the uh, work side of things. All right, well, we are out here at Bristol Motor Speedway in Bristol, Tennessee. Boy, I gotta say, if you have the opportunity to come to this place in person, do so. This is an incredible facility. The banking is insane. So we're here to race in the Bristol 1000. It's a Crown Vic race that uh, Cletus is putting on. We've done quite a few of these at the Freedom Factory, but never gone outside of the Freedom Factory. It's gonna be our first Crown Vic race not at the Freedom Factory, slash at a big half mile oval with like 30 degree banking. Uh, so this is gonna be pretty intense. I'm really excited for this. The cars are insane now. The cages are really good. They've got full containment seats. Uh, they've done a lot of work to improve them. But first up is the burnout contest. And I am actually a judge for the burnout contest. So I'm gonna go judge that. And then tomorrow we'll be, we'll be doing some racing. It's gonna be a good time. I'm so grateful to be a part of this. Shout out to Cletus and crew. Like, what an incredible, venue there's uh people pulling around now for the burnout contest the open there's 50 cars in open alone it's gonna be a long night so i better get to it <laughs> This is my Bristol car here. I, I normally am number seven, but that was taken, 77 was taken, so I want a triple seven. Right, look at this cage. But we've got a full containment seat. We've got a Hans device. So uh, very, very safe. But me and Ron have gone through and checked all the fluids. Coils are plugged in, all the injectors are plugged in. Just making sure everything's good. Right, Ron? Yep. That being said, I do not care about the cars surviving. You know what I mean? I care about you guys surviving. 80 laps, so lap 13 is not when you win the race. <laughs> Kevin Smith. 14. <laughs> lap 14. <laughs> okay, so you are your last year. We totaled 10 cars. 10 cars on lap 14. So I headed out for qualifying and I really had no idea what to expect. This track is pretty intimidating at first. The banking is so steep. You're going almost 90 miles an hour on the straightaways, which is ridiculous in a Crown Vic. And the way you have to drive this track is you basically throw it into the bank in a way that feels like you're probably gonna just go straight on into the wall and you have to trust that the bank is gonna be there to grab you and to hold you in. And it's intense and it definitely takes a uh, commitment uh, to, to really be quick. So I played it a bit conservative in qualifying and uh, it's probably a bit too conservative. I qualified like 25th out of 30, but we made our way to the opening ceremonies. It was awesome to see so many fans up in the stands and it was time to race. Now we've got our work cut out for us here because we were starting so far back and I know that my opportunities are going to be on starts and restarts. That's where you can make up the most ground. So I got a good jump on the start. I left a little bit of a gap so I could get a run and we started working our way down the straightaway. Got past a few cars right at the beginning and tried to stay out of trouble going into the first turn. 
that's the biggest thing with a race like this is it's a lot of laps and you can very easily get yourself taken out on lap one and then you don't get to do the rest of the race so we took it easy we played it conservative we got ahead and once we got going I felt pretty confident about the line and had pretty decent pace you know we had pulled ahead of a handful of cars and just started working on trying to pull away from the people behind us and towards the people ahead of us there was a little bit of a gap between us and them and i wanted to close that gap down now i did not expect us to have green conditions after the first lap i, I assumed there would be some incident on the first lap but everyone kept it clean and we managed to get a ton of laps under green so i was just working my way through i was working my gap you know trying to open the gap up to the people behind me and catch the people in front of me and i did manage to catch them but pretty much right as i got settled in we came into another caution so it was time for another restart now we're further up the field this time but the procedure is the same we need to get past as many people as we can on this restart keep working our way to the front we don't know how many more of these there are going to be so i used the nitrous to try to get past on the straight i didn't want to use it until the very end of the race because you know you can't win the race halfway through you've got to be there at the end uh and it got a little chaotic i had to run down on the apron and didn't make the the pass stick that i was going for but we're just trying to settle in and stay out of trouble this is crazy i mean there's so many cars and so many different people and we're racing on an incredibly fast track so you really got to be aware of your surroundings and keep checking the mirrors and once you start going, once you get a lap or two in, everyone spreads out just a little bit and things get a little simpler. So we're just gonna keep trying to plug our way through here. So during the second caution, I looked down and noticed that my temp gauge was pretty toasty because the car started running really odd. It went into some sort of limp mode, it was down several cylinders, things were not going well and I was hoping that it would cool off but it didn't. So I pulled into the pits and I tried to get back out there, there was nothing really we could do. I power cycled it just to, to take a gamble and it was running horribly. I mean it was making no power, it was probably on four cylinders so I knew that we were going to have to pit again we we're gonna have to come in again and either retire the car or see if there was something else we could do so we pulled back in they dumped gallons of water on the radiator and that helped it really did it got us back out there i managed to do a couple laps in clean air not drafting anybody and the car was feeling good uh, it was feeling good i felt like okay maybe we've got a shot at working our way up back through but after a few laps, it started misfiring again. It was just cooked again. It was just not going to stay cool. There was no chance. So I knew we had to pull back into the pits and retire the car. Now, fortunately, since we didn't race the last race, we were eligible to get in a backup car. So that's what we did. All right, well, you had we got a spare car. Laps. And let me show you, because no one's going to believe it. They're going to think this is excuses. <laughs> No power steering. And you must have done at least 20 laps like that. Pretty much from whenever I got in this car. It started out not great power steering wise, and then it got to the point where there was none. My arms, I'm going to be so sore tomorrow. I was. He was. He was. My arms hurt. I was on the airplane with Ron. I was like, dude, I don't know, man. I'm tired. My arms hurt. But we made it through. We finished the race. Tenth or eleventh, because there was only 10, 11 cars out there. If, we, if our first car hadn't overheated, we would have been in good shape. But hey. Part of it. Our first car over here, by the way. <laughs> All right, well, that is a wrap for Bristol. Man, video just does not do this place justice. What an awesome event. Huge shout out to Garrett and the whole crew, man. I, they do such a killer job putting these events on. I mean, I know it's like they're professionals at it now, but man, they just, they're always so dialed, you know? It, it's crazy. Um, the event was a blast. There's a ton of spectators, ton of fans here which was so cool you know the 
the energy and the vibe of the crowd steering and uh, it was a lot of fun. I am sweaty and I'm tired. That last car and power steering was rough, but we're done. We're done for the week. All right, so the first project we've tackled is our door handles here. So we didn't have one of the keys for the door handle, so it was kind of hard to lock it and it didn't shut well. So we've got a new pair of door handles. We now can lock it, double lock it basically. And they honestly look nicer because it's polished, matches the side. And then we got a pair. So we're gonna replace this door too, this lock as well. That way we can lock, you know, just the inside of the bus if we have this all opened up or we can lock the whole bus. Pretty neato. So while Sway's working on that, oh no, the generator's gotta be running. We wanna put, the, this awning we know works. This one we know has a messed up arm. So we wanna put it out now and see if we can use it. We need to measure to replace the arm, which we're not gonna have time to do before this trip, but definitely by the next trip and uh, see if it's functional enough to use it at an event or if it's gonna be a nightmare to get it to go back in, more or less. So I guess let's fire up the Jenny. That way you got some light too. You can use these lights too. Oh. These work without uh, the generator on. I just like to work in the dark. We need to figure out which battery is for the generator starter. Can you see that? Yeah, no, it's just been struggling. It's not that bad. I think it's just because it's been sitting. So I was having trouble finding the specific uh, backlight LEDs that I needed for this. I found the right ones, but they didn't work too great. So I went ahead and just temporarily put a light strip here to light up this panel at night when we're driving. Long term, we wanna replace, I might just end up replacing a lot of the gauges so I can get more modern ones that have nice backlight sockets. These are just very dated, uh, but either way, we got that so we can at least see our gauges at night. All right, I'm gonna try to put these, uh, put these awnings out. These awnings are really nice. Boom. That's that one. I'm kind of scared to do this one. So I started working on putting the awning out and pretty much immediately I realized this might have been a bad call. It uh, was just stuck on the one side. So I decided to get up there on the ladder, see if I could help it out. And when that wasn't working, I decided to basically abort the mission and just try to get it rolled back in. We need this thing to be in enough for us to go down the road. So it turned into a bit of a fight. All right, well, we got the awnings all closed back up. Unfortunately, this one's gonna be a little more work than we anticipated. So I'm hoping we can just replace the one arm. For this trip, we're not gonna be able to make it work. Moral of the story, uh, but we do still have the front one and we can bring the 10 by 10. So Sway's working on greasing up all the latches and the key latches so we can lock all the uh, side panels now that we've got a properly working door latch. This is really exciting because the door just shuts now. Uh, we've gone through underneath, done just kind of an inspection on everything, zip tied up any loose wires, all that good stuff. While we've got it here on the concrete and now it's time to move it back to the gravel so that we can get it plugged into our RV plug so that we can have the ACs on and all the lights on while we work on everything else. All right, we're gonna try to change out our stock Speedo here for a GPS one. This one is very intermittent. It honestly doesn't work way more than it works. We're gonna try to put a GPS one in here. It's a touch smaller, but I'm hoping it's still enough to work. 
we'll find out. But that way we have speed, especially when we get into those like 35 areas. So this is the one I got. It's GPS. It has like the speed odometer. I think we can add in like turn signals if we needed to, which we don't. Um, but it should be pretty simple. So I started taking the panel off so that I could remove the old speedometer and get to the wiring. It is definitely nerve wracking taking these panels off an older bus like this because there's so many wires back there and they're all in good shape, but you know, you don't want to knock anything unplugged and then you can't determine what it was. And this particular year of bus, all of the wiring was white. So trying to trace it back, it would be a challenge. So we're trying to be careful, trying to be nice to it, but we managed to get the old speedometer out. This is a big old bulk clunky thing I compared the new speedometer to the old one to see if it was gonna work the new one was the biggest one that I could find so it was a touch smaller but it looks like it's gonna fit so it's time to start chopping and hacking and splicing on the wiring I decided to go with adding a three pin Deutsch connector on the bus side that way if this particular speedo doesn't work all we've got to do is basically wire another one of those plugs onto a new speedometer's harness and we already have all the wires there ready to go you just got to plug it back in that was my idea at least that's why we did it that way so I got that side done I had to tidy up some grounds that tied together that were going to the speedo originally and then start working on getting everything onto the new speedo side of the harness now this part's way easier because i'm not having to reach through a hole in the dash to get it done but we managed to get that connector on and get to see if this is all going to work don't throw it <laughs> all right new speedo is in check it out so that's powered up and on and that's what the light's on. It is a tiny bit crooked, but I'm gonna end up taking this panel back off anyway to change some of this other stuff out. So don't judge me for the tiny bit crooked. It was tricky to hold everything in place, but we got our sensor back down over here, kind of hidden out of the way. Hopefully this thing works well. Now I have an odometer, trip meter, compass, speed. Very nifty. I haven't had a chance to see our headlight upgrades at night. Oh, that's perfect. That is so much better than it was before. Um, and then you can see our little light here. I can still see out fine. Let me see what it's like with these off. It's a little on the bright side, but it's not bad. It's not distracting. Boom, that's our speedo there. So definitely an improvement. Sweet, all right. See, it's a it's a good one. It's got like that built-in power. We got the E-Track. Final secured, so that's done. We added some pieces back here for the scoop. We got these boards back in for getting the car in here. They were set up for a much narrower car than we have. And we pulled the air mattress out of storage. This is so Sway's room. That looks small in here. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. And it's like a normal size. Yeah. All right, next up is some maintenance. Oh, so we've already got the cover off the generator here. Now we wanted to do all of the maintenance on the bus. We wanted to do engine oil, all the filters associated with the engine, transmission fluid, filters, everything. Everything, including the generator. However, there is no uh, time in the time budget to get that done. So we're going to just go ahead and knock out the generator side of things. Because assuming we don't have any issues, this thing should run for like five days straight. It's gonna start before we leave the driveway and it in theory shouldn't turn off till we pull back in the driveway because we need it to run the ACs while we're running down the road. So we wanna make sure this thing is good and happy and fresh. It's a touch low on oil. We know the air filter is completely plugged up. Uh, we determined that through some diagnosing. We're having a little bit of issue if we try to really load it up with it black smoking and uh, determined the air filter was clogged yada yada you get the idea so this is a good thing to get done it's time to get to it so fortunately for maintenance on this thing they make it pretty easy there's a removable panel on the bottom and then you can really get to everything i mean it's about as easy as it could get so i went ahead and pulled the drain plug to drain the oil out i'm not sure when this was changed last and it's definitely something you want to make sure we've got good oil so i got the new oil filter tossed on and then i had a bit of a dilemma i didn't want to change the fuel filter because if we change it we're going to need to reprime the system which means we're going to need to crank this thing for a while and the battery for the starter on it has been a little bit iffy and also in the time budget we do not have time to go get a new battery and replace it so I decided to just hold off on the fuel filter we'll bring it with us on the bus we'll have it if we need it but for right now we are really limited on time we've got to kind of pick and choose our battles so 
I went ahead and got the oil changed, the new air filter on, got all that sorted out, and then we could go ahead and bolt the cover back on. It's a little bit of a nuisance because all the bolts are different, but not too bad, all things considered. Whew, all right, well, we've just been busy holding this thing up. We got the toolbox filled with our tools. Got that squared away. In this cabinet, we have 10 wheels with tires on them, jack stands, gear oil, quick change, gears, tow plates, a bunch of stuff in there. And here we got fuel jugs and we've got the jack back there. So we still got a little bit of room to throw some stuff up on top of the jack. We've got our big spare parts totes up here. In this cabinet, that's pretty much everything out here. We still got a tiny bit of room, but pretty much filling it to the brim. And then up here, I keep, I'm keeping all the electric tools in here just because that cabinet with the toolbox can get kind of hot. So i got all my impacts, electric ratchets, air pump, light, all my Milwaukee stuff's in here. Um, and this is like consumable spare stuff, hose clamps, a little die grinder kit, transfer pump. And then this is vet small spare parts, lines, tie rods, um, water pump, things like that. Also got some more stuff over here, alternator, spare fan. And then back here is basically both bus and vet consumables as far as oil, filters, belts, things like that. That's all back here. And generator. Oh. So yeah, that's that. We got this kind of restocked up here. So I need to close this up. Got some moving blankets because we are gonna have to, you know, basically stack some tires in front of or on top of the car. It's gonna get a little tight because we gotta get the car in here far enough forward to put the scooter behind it. And then, yeah, basically cram everything else in. So I'm gonna quit driver. I'm gonna get back to it. So now that we had all of the accessory stuff packed, we had things under the floor, we had things in the cabinets, everything was packed except for the car. We wanted to do the car last. So we started with our load up procedure it's uh it's getting simpler by the day we're pretty used to it by now we know the order of operations so we go ahead and get everything opened up and then pull the car up on the lift gate now the only tricky part is this car is so dang wide i mean it's just abnormally wide so it is very tight going between the doors which is why that's something that we want to resolve but for now we've just basically got to bungee the doors open even wider and then we're able to get this thing up and into the back of the bus so we get it lifted up and then we go ahead and winch it in we could drive it in which would also speed things up but we might as well winch it just to make it easier we can go nice and slow and make sure we've got it good and centered so once we had the car in it was time for the scooter we've never put the scooter in here so this is kind of a new experience as to if it would fit and it did fit and not only did it fit but we were able to fit a bunch of tires around it too so with all that done it was time to batten down the hatches all right, I hope this thing's all closed back up. Such an interesting feeling to go from being empty to completely full and it looks no different on the outside. No trailer, no nothing. Cars inside, tires, wheels, scooter, one wheels, fuel, tools, spare parts, everything, all the things. Uh, so yeah, did I lock this? Yep. Boom. So if you come in here, oh, excuse me, excuse me. got the car in here. We did have a moving blanket to put tires on top, but we were able to cram them back behind it with the scooter. So we got four unmounted tires back there. We could fit two to four more back there, no problem. So that is good to know. Our E-Track straps strapped. Boom, that's done. Probably leave the AC on overnight, uh, but we're pretty much ready to go. We gotta throw our luggage in here tomorrow and we're ready to party. That being said, we are loaded up, we are ready to go. We are going to be heading out at 5 in the morning tomorrow. That's the goal, at least, uh, because we need to get to LS Fest before 7 to check in, register, to register, get in, and get our spot set up. Otherwise, we're going to be sleeping out in the parking lot. Like to obviously get there, get that all done and dusted, and then be able to chill, have a relaxing evening. So I'm looking forward to it. Nervous, but excited. First long trip with the bus with everything in it, fully loaded down. Yeah nerve-wracking so paranoid of breaking down towing but you know it can happen in anything it happened in our 2020 Ford so that being said I'm gonna quit jibber jabber and I'm gonna let you guys go um, but I hope to see you next time we'll be cruising to LS Fest seeing how this thing does for a whole four or five day trip and get to compete in the vet for the first time in a while so that being said for now we are out of time so thank you for watching thanks for subscribing I sure hope I'll get to see you next time goodbye